Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for the introduction, John. You know, you could have said some nicer stuff about us, but anyway, uh, out here in the northern rim of the dark forest of Norway, because my parents decided to vacation here over Christmas break, I ended up getting lost. Uh, thank goodness I have my camera. I took it out in case, you know, you saw Vikings or the Loch Ness Monster, because they're in Norway, I think. Um, anyway, I'm lost. So I decided to do my English studies project now in case I don't get it done uh, once I get out of here or in case I don't ever get out of here. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to start talking to you a little bit about the Renaissance and uh, the Great Chain of Being and also a little bit about Scansion. So let's get to it. So the Renaissance began about 1500s, you know, they say it began a little bit earlier with the early Tudor Age. But anyway, it lasted until about 1660, which was the end of the Commonwealth Interregnum, which started in 1649. So Renaissance goes from 1500s until 1660. Now, Renaissance itself means rebirth, which is actually pretty fitting, considering a lot of stuff changed. And there were a lot of big ideas, big names, and most of all, big pants. One reason that this is such a pivotal era is because of the great feeling of individualism people were beginning to experience. The individualism came from reading classical literature. It showed the people that humans were capable of developing toward perfection, and many people grabbed hold of this idea. And that's why in this era we see things like the rise of democracy, a new sense of nationalism, new astronomical ideas, and new views of geography. Another reason that the Renaissance was such a big influence on literature as we know it is one invention that single-handedly changed the entire distribution process of literature. That invention is the flush toilet by Sir John Harrington in the late 1500s. Sir John Harrington was actually the godson of Queen Elizabeth. He made a toilet for her and him, but didn't make any more because he got made fun of. So that single-handedly changed literature. Can you eat leaves? <coughs> no. No, I can't eat leaves. Oh, that wasn't the invention that you're looking for? How about this one? The printing press. Well, it was invented in 1436, so not in the era, but printing became even more prevalent and continued to single-handedly change literature by making books more readily available for people to read. But literature in this time period was interesting because at the end of the Renaissance it took a turn for the cynical and melancholy. Some major authors during the Renaissance were William Tyndale, known for printing the first version of the New Testament in 1525, Sir Thomas More, who was made famous by his work Utopia, Christopher Marlowe, who was as scandalous as Paris Hilton, and some guy named William Shakespeare. Now Shakespeare was pretty big into poetry and plays, I mean, dude wrote a play for every year between 1590 and 1611, but that's besides the point. Behind the scenes, there were a bunch of movements going on. There was the Baroque movement, which was starting to create a more realistic feel in the elements of literature and also in the artistic movement. Then there was Puritanism, which was due to an increased sense of individualism in the era, and that itself began to destroy the Renaissance, and eventually did late in the 1600s. It didn't help things when Shakespeare died. After his death, drama kind of faded out of the Renaissance, and although literary works were still created, they turned more to essays and philosophical documents. Charles I lost his head in 1649, putting a damper on the Renaissance and bringing the Commonwealth Interregnum into play, a time ruled by Parliament and Oliver Cromwell. This final period brought out great thinkers and writers, such as John Milton and Thomas Hobbes, famous for his legal government book, Leviathan. That pretty much ended the Renaissance, leaving behind a legacy of great poetry, drama, and a new system of literary distribution. Now that we've discussed the Renaissance, I feel that it's time to kind of move forward. Although we won't be moving out of the era, we'll just be talking about something different, and that is the Great Chain of Being, first discussed by Alexander Pope in his work, Essay on Man. Now for those visual people, I decided to make an animation, and you enjoy that while I go and try and find something to eat. Can you eat sticks? Minty. God. Beast. Human. Angel. Rock. Plant. And it looks 
looks like this is gonna be a close race. Our guest referee is here, ready to shoot off the gun and start this one. And there it is, and God is off, and he is in the lead. And up next is gonna be the Angel. God is gonna win this one, and the Angel is up next, and the crowd is Yay! absolutely loving it. Brock and Plant have still yet to move, and here comes John across the finish line, and along with the Beast. This the plant is growing. Oh, now it's on fire. How awful. So, hopefully now you know a little bit more about the great chain of being and in case you forgot already it goes like this it goes god angels human beasts plants and then rock remember rock beats scissors paper beats rock and then plants eat rock anyway hope you enjoyed that and uh it's starting to get a little dark so i'm probably going to make a shelter i've seen every episode of survivor man that there is so hopefully i can remember how to make one until then watch this educational video on scansion what is scansion well, let's try it in a sentence. It looks like I'm going to have to get tested for scansion again. Yeah, well, the rash came back, so I don't know what else it could be. False. The only doctor you would want to see about scansion is a doctor of literature. The book describes scansion as a literary term used when discussing rhythms of poetry by dividing the lines into feet. No, not those feet. Or those feet. But feet that indicate locations of binomial accents. There are six major feet. There are I am, Anapest, Trochee, Dactyl, Spondy, and Pyrrhic. Now that that has been dealt with, there are three major methods for the scansion of English verse. The traditional graphic method, the musical method, and the acoustic method. Musical and acoustic methods require way too much thought and knowledge, so the graphical method is the most common. Here's an example from the book. And still she slept and as your lid did sleep. So here we can use the graphical method to determine what type of feet and meter this line of the poem has. And still she slept, and as your lid did sleep. So there it is, all graphicalized. The line, when divided, has five feet, so that means the meter is pentameter. The rhythm is unstressed, stressed, making it an iam. So we can say that this poem has iambic pentameter. The rules don't always have to stick throughout the poem, but it should be throughout most of it. Scansion includes meter as well, typically. Scansion is thought to have been derived from quantitative verse, but no one really knows who started it. That's all the time we have for now. Tune in next week as we discuss nuclear fission and you. Okay, so I finished my shelter, as you can see right there. It's a little small, but you know, I'd prefer to say that it's cozy instead of small. So let's recap what we've learned today, now that you've learned about Scansion. Learned about Scansion, learned about the Great Chain of Being, and we learned about the Renaissance. But we've also learned that there aren't any Vikings in the dark forest of Norway. So until uh, until next time, you know, feel free to ask John any questions, the goofy looking kid up front. And remember the Norwegian saying, Irn the Fernde, give the bird a big feet. And that means if the dark forest cold doesn't get you, Bigfoot probably will. Have a good one. Now where'd my shelter run off to?